the kulli masjid that all the sons of Adam you should wear uh, uh, nice clothing, take nice clothing when you go to the masjid. So the scholars say when this ayah was revealed, it just referred to salah. But now that we have places established for salah, it's recommended to wear to the masjid. Another fact that the author brings is for ulama, those people of knowledge, should wear special clothing so that the people know who to go to ask for knowledge. So he mentions an example from the great scholar Mushtaq Al-Izz ibn Abdul Salam Rahimahullah that when he was in Ihram once that he saw some people making a mistake in their tawaf. So he tried to correct them but they just thought he was some ordinary person. But then afterwards he put on special clothing and Allah and this can show that uh, he was done with his Ihram. So he put on the special clothing of the fuqaha so he, he said that فَلَمَّا لَبِسْتُ ثِيَابَ الْفُقَهَاءِ وَأَنْكَرْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ ذَلِكَ وَأَنْكَرْتُ ذَلِكَ وَأَنْكَرْتُ عَلَيْهِمْ ذَلِكَ سَمِعُوا وَأَطَاعُوا فَإِذَا لَبِسَهَا لِمِثْلِ ذَلِكَ كَانَ فِي أَجْلِ So he says that I wore some clothing uh, that the fuqaha are known for and I uh, re rebuked them or I, re I refuted them and then when they saw me in that clothing, they listened and obeyed. Or So when the scholar wears this clothing, then the author says he will be rewarded. The fourth category is makruh, the clothing which is disliked. Wearing something out of arrogance. And he mentions a report, but I'm hesitant to mention it because Allah knows best with its authenticity. But the shahid of the hadith, it just shows that one of the people in another report um, with different wording that is sound and, and um, authentic is that whoever drags their clothing out of arrogance then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, will not look at them on the day of judgment or sorry they will not be able to smell the fragrance of Jannah and it is smelled from a fragrance from a distance of a thousand years. Also, what is reprimanded is libas shuhra, something that is worn solely to be the center of attention and to be fame famous and to show people that they are different than everyone else. Uh, so he mentions a report مَنْ لَبِسَ الثَّوْبَ شُهْرَةً أَلْبَسَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِيَّاهُ مَنْ لَبِسَ الثَّوْبَ شُهْرَةً أَلْبَسَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِيَّاهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ أَلْهَبَ فِيهِ النَّارِ Whoever wears a garment for popularity and fame, Allah will clothe him with one on the day of judgment and throw him into the fire. And then also another one who may wear simple clothing to show people that they are pious when in reality that is not their, their state. And he mentions a report from uh, Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu anhu that a man, Farqad ibn Yaqub al-Subhi, uh, he was wearing a clothing that was very, you know, um, uh, what's the correct word? Thawb uh, al-Khashin is... Um, like it has basically um, torn apart. So Hassan Radlan came to him and he said, Oh Farqat, this is not clothing of piety. Piety is that which is solidified in the heart and is proven through action. Also what is recommended, the author goes back and saying, is recommended to wear white clothing because the Prophet said, Wear from your clothing that which is white in color. Because it is from the best of your clothing. 
وكفنوا فيها موتاكم ان شال يو دير وذ بي as for that which is prohibited is for men to wear um, gold or silk um, and the report of Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu ma wa radiallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la talbasu al-harir fa innahu man labisahu fi dunya lam yalbasu fi al-akhira that for men should not wear silk because it, whoever wears it in this world will not wear it in the next, in the hereafter. And whoever drinks from the vessels of gold and silver in this world, then they will not drink from it in the hereafter. يطاف عليهم بصحاف ذهب وأكواب As the, the uh, utensils of Jannah will be from gold. So... It is a reward for the believers in the hereafter. Um, and in this dunya, we are supposed to work towards the hereafter and not fulfill all of our desires. Um, as for what is allowed, then there are some reports that, you know, just small trims of gold and silver on one's garment is allowed. Um, the author he speaks of his madhab that it is disliked in the Hanafi madhab that a man wear a garment that has embroidery of gold or silver. As long as it is less or no more than four fingers in length and width. And width. لخبر مسلم نهى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن لبس الحريري إلا موضع أصبع أو أصبعين أو ثلاثة أو أربع reporting the collection of Imam Muslim which is narrated the rawi is not mentioned here the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم forbade for a man to wear gold that which is the length except that which is the length of four fingers والحاصل أن استعمال أواني ذهب الفضة للرجال والنساء مكروه كراهية التحريم. Um, so his opinion, which is interesting to me, I, I was assuming that it was prohibited, but he says that using the vessels of gold and silver for men and women is strongly disliked. But there's another hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said إنما يجرجر في بطنه نار جهنم. But the one who drinks from these vessels, they are only, you know, putting in their stomach the fire of hell. So, um, he also says, uh, which I didn't know in the method, that it is disliked for men and women to wear gold and silver. Uh, is, it was disliked for men to wear silk, sorry, but it is halal for women. Everyone agrees that it's halal for women, but there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that he held a piece of gold and a piece of silk in his hand, and he showed it to his companions, and he said that these are prohibited for the men of my ummah, but permissible for the women of my ummah. And then he mentions that it is disliked to wear uh, yellow and red clothing uh, for men. And we the, there's a hadith where a chapter of Imam Nawi brings in Rad Salihin that is permissible because although the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in words that it is the clothing of the disbelievers that later in his life he wore those colors. And as we know in Usul al-Fiqh that the action of the Prophet ﷺ is a proof 
um, according to some that is stronger than his statement. So he says, um, وَلَا بَأْسَ بِسَائِرِ الْأَنْوَانِ All other colors are lawful, but he says, وَقُلِهَا لَبْسُ الْمُعَصْفَرُ وَالْمُزَعْفَرُ الْأَحْمَرُ وَالْأَصْفَرُ That the yellow and red are disliked, لِلْرِجَالِ فَقَدْ For men only, وَلَا بَأْسَ بِسَائِرِ الْأَنْوَانِ الْوَانِ But there is no restriction on all other colors. وَبَقِيَ فِي هَذِي الْأَبْحَاثِ تَفْصِيلَاتٌ وَتَعْرِيفَاتٌ وَاقْتِلَافَاتٌ لَا يَسَعُهَا الْمَجْلِسِ there's a lot more discussion that could be made in this, but he says that it would take up too much time to cover all in detail. So, as for the hadith related to gold and silver for men and women, Okay. So, so under this hadith that men should not wear it, uh, silk, because whoever wears it in this row will not wear it in the hereafter. So, in the commentary of Al Nadwi, he mentions. That there is a prohibition in this hadith for men wearing silk, and there is a consensus upon this. That silk is from the clothing of the people of Jannah. Uh, whoever wears a silk in this world, he will be deprived of it in the hereafter. Because he has hastened to get the bounty of Jannah in this world. So then he was prohibited from that. That a, a recompense that is similar to his action. And silk is prohibited for men but permissible for women. Similar is a gold. Whereas the true, uh, the true adornment of a man is his character and his manners and his manhood. Or masculinity. وزينه المرأة بحليها وأنوثتها مع جميل أخلاقها. And a woman's adornment is her uh, uh, garment, uh, her decorations or jewelry, and her femininity along with her character. أما في الآخرة فيشترك فيهما الرجال والنساء. But in the year after, both men and women will be rewarded and recompensed with this because it is the abode of reward and honor it is not a place of um, actions and accountability that Allah says the people of Jannah they will be um they will be served, that there will be crowds of servants around them with plates from gold and cups, and in it is whatever the soul desires and the eye, pleases of the eye, and they will be told you will abide therein forever.
طيب. So next is the discussion of the clothing of women. As women have much, uh, they have a different, um, they have a different duty and guidelines and restrictions and limitations. So Allah he says, وَمِنَ الْمُحَرَّمِ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ إِذْهَارُ الزِّينَةِ لِلْأَجَانِبِ It is prohibited for women to show their beauty and decoration to men who they are lawful for marriage. وَالتَّمَايُلْ وَلُبْسِ الثَّوْبِ الرَّقِيقُ They should not wear clothing that is too light or almost see-through. And some of the scholars consider this from the major sins. And he mentions a hadith from the Muslim where the Prophet Sallallahu said Sunfani min ahli nari lam arahuma There are two categories of people who will be in the fire on the Day of Judgment that I have yet to see. Qawmun ma'ahum siyatun ka'adnaab al-baqar That people who uh, will have, uh, you can say like um, whips that are long like the tails of cows and they will use them to beat people unjustly and that they are women who will be naked yet clothed or clothed yet naked and they will be turning away from the obedience of Allah and teaching it to others. And their heads will be like the humps of camels. They will not enter Jannah, nor will they smell its fragrance. And indeed, its fragrance can be smelled from a far distance. So anyway, um, the, res the summary of the response, the the summary of the guidelines for the dress code of women uh, are, are summarized in the work of the late great um, Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al Bani in Hijab Muratil Muslima fil Kitab wa Sunnah. So he says there are eight categories that can be synthesized, not eight categories, but eight, eight characteristics that can be. Uh, extracted from all of the Nusus al warida the the revealed texts regarding the Quran and the Sunnah. Number one, that the entire body should be covered except that which has been exempted. So in the in the Quran there are two ayat, Surah to Nur, verse thirty one, and. Uh, Surah Al-Ahzab verse 59 Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated hijab for women So Allah he says وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبَصَارِهِنَّ That tell the believing women to lower their gaze وَيَحْفَضْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ And they should guard their chastity and their you know, genitalia from prohibited Sexual acts. And they should not show from their adornment except that which is natural or apparent. So the interpretation for this um, was when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as narrated by Aisha she, she, in Sunan Abi Dawood that her sister Asma bint Abi Bakr radiallahu anha دخلت على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليها ثياب الرقاق. that she entered on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and she had clothing that did not cover her fully. فأعرض عنها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. so the Prophet turned away from أسماء and he said يا أسماء إن المرأة إذا بلغت المحيض لم يصلح أن يرى منها إلا هذا وهذا. وأشار إلى وجهي وكفي. That he told her that oh asma when a woman has reached puberty, um, or she has you know begun her menstrual um, bleeding, or her, after her first menstrual period, uh, cycle and period, it is not correct for her 
anything to be seen from her body except and he pointed to his face and his head so this is the difference that Abdullah bin Mas'ud and even Abdullah bin Abbas took from the ayah what is it that is natural and manifest from the body of the human being of the woman to be seen that that Ibn Mas'ud uh, Mas said that the face and the hands and I believe Ibn Abbas held the opinion of just the hands so the number one condition is that the whole body be covered and um the other ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab Ya ayuha al-Nabiyu Qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisai al-mu'minina yudunina alayhinna min jalabibihin Thalika adna an yu'arafna fala yu'udhain wa kana allahu ghafura rahim That O Prophet tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that they should wear jilbab um, which some scholars have the opinion covers the whole body except the eyes. Um, or some said that one eye can be shown. And then Allah, he said, that is better for them to be recognized and not harmed. So some sisters, I mean, those of us living in non-Muslim countries, are shadow or hijab because they will stand out. They will look as different. But in reality, Allah wants you to be distinguished from disbelievers. By obeying him, that this is something that is an honor for the believer, that to dress like everybody else and disobey Allah, this isn't you know fitting in or being accepted. The real acceptance is acceptance from Allah. In Allah ida habba abdan na Jibril ila akhir hadith. When Allah loves a servant, He tells Jibril, Jibril tells the angels, the angels tell the people of the earth, and then the love for that person spreads all over the earth but if the real the real isolation and the real sorrow is being disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever we you know want to be admitted into a specific you know work role or school role there's a uniform to follow there's a dress code because why we see it as honor for us I can stay at this company I can work in this institution but what about the religion of Allah, the religion of Allah, there is also a dress code. So number one criteria is that the whole body be covered. Now who are those that are exempted from a woman having to cover around them? One style of the hijab is that it shouldn't go up in the head, but it should come down over the chest of a woman. As Allah described. One is her husband. That, you know, in this era, like people, a lot of people take pictures for social media, Instagram. They want to be seen as beautiful. For the whole public world, they want to be seen as beautiful. But for their, their closest life partner, there is really no, uh, there isn't the same amount of adornment for them that you two are. Like a garment for each other. Hunna libasu lakum, antum libasu lahun. So it's important to take care of our uh, our duty to our partner both ways. Even, you know, Abdullah bin Abbas, he was seen one night, you know, after the Isha and the Masjid, and there was no other companion that he would meet for the rest of the night. And he was seen, you know, grooming himself with his beard and his hair and he was about to leave and his companions asked him why are you doing this he said that you know i'm going to my wife and just as i want her to look good for me i want to look good for her so it is both ways um, but men are visually stimulated and if uh, you know all the temptation that they see outside in the middle of the day if they have no woman or you know partner at home who's caring for her appearance for him then don't help the shaitan over your husband. So the first category is the husband. A woman does not have to cover in front of him. O abba'in, or for her fathers. O abba'i or her step, uh, sorry, or her father-in-law. O abna'ihin, or her son. O abna'i baruratin, or her stepsons. O ikhwanihin, or for her brothers. O bani ikhwanihin, or for her nephews from her brother. Or her nephews from her sister. 
Only certain or other women. Only certain not. Or for what her right hand possesses. Or for very old men who do not have any sexual desire. Or a young child who has not really distinguished from the rules of um, a woman's uh, sexuality and, and and things of that nature. And then Allah not just saying how she should cover, but He also told her how to walk. He said she should not walk in a way that will reveal her, her adornment. This is just walking in general, but imagine now with high heels. The one high heels is a harm to the woman herself. But what it does, it brings unwanted attention to her. And repent to Allah, all you believers, so that you all may be successful. So it's an interesting, uh, you know, faida in both the two ayat in the Quran that deal with hijab or the main two. Allah talks about the concept of tawbah and his forgiveness and mercy. And this ayah, he, la- he told the believers to all make tawbah. In the ayah of Surah Hazab, Allah, he said, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah is ever forgiving, ever merciful. Number two is that the dress of a woman, Muslim woman, should not be an adornment in itself. That it's clothing for necessity. But when it comes to being in presence of men who are allowed for it to marry, it should not be something that is an adornment in itself. So there's one clothing that has the aspect of being beautiful and then there's one that is nothing but a costume. Number three is that it should not be see-through. It should cover the body thoroughly. Number four, it should not be um, too tight, it should, but loose. It should be very loose and not tight and show the shape of the body. Number five, it should not be uh, added with any perfume or fragrance in front of other men, as it is not lawful for a woman to um, wear perfume in the presence of other men who are lawful for her to marry. That even there's a report, I think, of Darakutin Rahimullah, he reports that after the demise of the Prophet, وسلم, that Abu Huraira was seated on the side of the road, and a Muslim woman who was fully covered passed him, but she had perfume on. So he asked her that, where are you going? So she said to the masjid to pray. So then he asked her that, um, that uh, did you put on perfume with the intention of going to pray? So she, he said yes. She said yes. She told him yes. So then he said, you should go back and take a shower. Because I heard the Prophet Wasallam say that any woman who goes out with perfume and fragrance to the masjid to pray, Allah does not accept her salah. Number six is that it shouldn't resemble the clothing of men. It should not resemble the clothing of men. And as the Prophet ﷺ cursed the men who imitate women and the women who imitate men. Number seven, it should not resemble the clothing of the disbelieving women. And for this, and Allah knows best, if there is a garment that is exclusive to non-Muslim women uh, of a specific religion, then a believer should never wear those clothing. And number eight is it shouldn't be the clothing of the Basu Shuhra, those which take popularity and fame. Okay. Um, So Imam Tabrani mentions that four people, the Prophet said, four people are cursed in this world and the next. And the angels said, I mean to it. A man who Allah made a male and he made himself into a female and tries to imitate women. 
or a woman who Allah made a woman and she becomes a man and tries to imitate men or the one who gives bad directions to a blind person so that they get lost from their path and rajulun hasur a man who you know tries to make himself celibate and Allah only made or Allah um, did not make anyone hasur except Yahya ibn Zakariya and hasur he explains this alladhi la ya'ti nisa imma min al-unna wa imma min al-udfa the man who doesn't go towards women either out of desire or or uh, it's too refrained refrain from using his desire in halal way. When the okay. Um, he says it is befitting of a man to per, to prevent his wife from doing things uh, that imitate a man, whether it be in dress or Or so that he may save her from being on the curse, so they may be saved from the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he used the ayah, O you who believe, قُلْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَحَلِيكُمْ نَارًا That, O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the hellfire. And Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he quotes, أَيْ بِتَعْلِيمِهِمْ وَتَأْدِيبِهِمْ A man can save his family from the hellfire by teaching them and disciplining them. And وَأَمْرِهِمْ بِطَاعَةِ رَبِّهِمْ And com commanding and enjoining them to obey their Lord. وَنَهِيهِمْ عَنْ مَعْسِيَتِ And uh, stopping them from his disobedience. وَيَقَوْلِ النَّبِيهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولَ عَنْ رَعِيَتِ All of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible for your flock. فَالْإِمَامُ رَاعٍ وَهُوَ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِ The man is a Sorry, the leader is a shepherd and responsible for his flock. And a man is responsible for his family, and he will be questioned about that. Allah. Okay. Now the next part of the which is much shorter than what we discuss in clothing is. The rulings regarding to hygiene. So the jet black hair of Jibreel السلام, when he came to the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith is that he came to teach the companions their religion. And he came into this, he came and appeared in this fashion to teach them um, to groom themselves and take care of themselves and Jibreel's hair was long in the hadith and he mentions that it is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, as reported on the Prophet ﷺ would keep his hair either from his, up to his shoulder uh, ear lobe length or his shoulder blade um, And what is a guideline for hair for the male is that uh, what is known as Naha Rasulullah The Prophet prohibited for cutting the hair what we would call nowadays as a fade that the top is longer than the side or the side is longer than the top and it's not all one even length but different lengths but the Prophet told his companion that either shave it all off or let it all grow but it shouldn't be different lengths and majority of the fuqaha regarded qaza' as makruh is disliked but in the hamd al-madhab is regarded as haram as for the sunnah al-fitrah that this narration he reports he says khamsun min al-fitrah but in the other report of Abu Dawud, Ashr min al-Fitrah, that there are ten parts that every prophet he did. It was part of the natural disposition of the human being to have um, hygiene. So five of them are from wudu, which we know wudu, but the five that are not from wudu is 
al khitan which is circumcision and istihdad that shaving the pubic hair natful ilt is actually plucking the the armpit hair and this usually they say is easier for the person who starts from their very first you know growth at uh, in puberty once a person gets used to shaving is very difficult to pluck the the armpit hair but if they cannot pluck they should shave and to cut one's fingernails and toenails and to trim the mustache for men and the report of Anas he said uh, the Prophet gave us a length of 40 days to shave our pubic hair and trim our nails, trim our mustache, and shave, uh, pluck our armpit hair. And it is also disliked for a believing Muslim to pluck their gray hairs. As the Prophet said, لا تنتفوا شيب ما من مسلم يشيب شيبة في الإسلام إلا كان له نور يوم القيام That no believer gets gray hair, the Prophet said, do not, you know, pluck your gray hair or dye it into a black color. Because there is no Muslim that gets old in Islam, like, until they get gray hair, except that that gray hair will be nur on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from dyeing our hair black for men. But he encouraged it for other colors besides black. The last prohibition is for a woman to get fake hair extensions or using the hair of others. As the Prophet ﷺ cursed such in the hadith, لَعَنَا عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ الْوَاصِلَ وَالْمُسْتَوْصِلَ وَالْوَاشِمَ وَالْمُسْتَوْشِمَ وَالْمُتَنَمِّصَ وَالْمُتَفَلِّجَ لِلْحُسْنَ الْمُغِيَّرَةُ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ That the one who gets tattoos and gives tattoos and gets hair extensions or plucks her eyebrows or the one who does it who gets it done and the one who does it because all of this changes the natural creation of Allah the best beauty is the way Allah created us this concludes our session may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us subhanakallah oh I wanted to mention the ahadith of the adhiyya of wearing clothing so Imam Nawi he mentions in الأذكار ذا باب ما يقول إذا لبس ثوبا جديدا أو نعلا وما أشبه What should a person say when they get new clothes or shoes and say similar things to it It is recommended for them to say الله ملك الحمد أنت كسوتني والله praises to you you gave me to wear this أسألك خيره وخير ما سني عليه I ask you the good of him the good it has been made for وعرض بك من شره وشر ما سني عليه I seek refuge in you from what it was made um, and uh, mean it's from its evil, and the evil was made for. Another hadith the Prophet said, "Man lebis a thoban jadidan, faqal alhamdulillah ladi kasani ma awari bihi awrati, wa tajamalu bihi fi hayati." Whoever, when they get a new clothing, say, "All praises to Allah, the one who clothed me with this, that I may cover my private parts, and I may adorn myself with it." Thumma amada ila thoban ladi aqlaqa fatazadaq li. Then he gave his old garment that he had as charity. Um, then, um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clothe him with the clothing of Jannah, I believe. Or he will be in the protection of Allah, whether he's alive or dead. And then, when you see your friend wearing a, a new clothing, there's a dua for us to read. Um, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told his companion, Abli wa akhliqi marratain. Um, that the Prophet ﷺ was brought a khamis wa a black garment, and he said, Man tarawna naksuha hadhi khamis wa Who do you think we should give this to? So the people came quiet. So then, فَغَالِ اُتُونِ بِأُمِّ Khalid. So he said that, give it to the mother of Khalid. So the Prophet ﷺ was brought فَآتِيَ بِالنَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَأَلْبَسَنِيهَا 
بيدي وقال أبلي وأخلقي مرتين. So Umm Khalid is the narrator of the hadith. He said the Prophet ﷺ gave her a garment and he told her that wear it until it 